Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Britton. I'm an epilepsy physician at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, I primarily I care for adults with uh, epilepsy. Today I would like to talk about uh, the first seizure. Once conditions that can produce a uh, temporary seizure condition are ruled out, um, then, and if the cause of the seizure remains uncertain, uh, then the decision needs to be made whether a person requires medication uh, to prevent uh, further seizure activity from occurring. Um, tests used to help make that determination include an EEG and often an MRI scan. If a person uh, presents first to an emergency room, more often, uh, more commonly, uh, they would receive a CT scan or CAT scan instead of an MRI scan. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, in general, uh, an MRI scan should probably be done if there's concern about an underlying brain lesion that may have led to the first seizure. And if you take everybody who's had a first seizure and did an MRI scan on them, what is the percent of the time you'll find a lesion such as a tumor that accounts for the person's seizure? Uh, uh, studies that have looked at that have shown the rate of finding such lesions is actually quite low, 9 to 13 percent. So a person who has a first seizure, although there is a potential of a brain tumor, which I think most people who've had a seizure might uh, fear uh, could be the underlying cause, while something like that may be present, the vast majority of the time, no such lesion will be found. However, an MRI should be done to make absolutely certain. <clears throat> if an abnormality is found on MRI, we know that person is more likely than the person without such an abnormality to go on to have more seizures. So that person might warrant treatment after a first seizure more so than somebody with a negative MRI. The EEG is another test commonly used after a first seizure. Um, the EEG can be helpful in making the decision whether a person after a first seizure should be treated or not uh, for many reasons. Um, occasionally the EEG will show a pattern that suggests a particular what we call epilepsy syndrome uh, which we might know has a high or low risk of, of future seizures. For example, if an EEG in a child who had a single seizure showed a finding called central temporal spikes, that patient uh, may very well have a relatively benign entity called benign Rolandic epilepsy. Uh, that child may not require treatment, and even if a treatment is deemed necessary, it will likely outgrow their seizures over time. However, if a pattern on EEG called generalized polyspike and wave was seen, uh, that might uh, correlate with an epilepsy syndrome called juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, which is known to be prone to seizure recurrence and uh, may very well warrant treatment after a first seizure. Sometimes patients who have a first seizure don't fit into a clean of what we call epilepsy syndrome. Um, what is the percent of the time the EEG helps separate those who need medication and those who don't? Unfortunately, the EEG is an, an imperfect uh, tool. Um, in persons who've had a single seizure who undergo an EEG, roughly 50 to 60 percent will show abnormalities. Uh, the remainder won't. However, the remainder without what we call epileptiform abnormalities, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they're free of the risk of further of future seizures. Um, approximately 40 to 50 percent of the time, they may very well to go on to have, have a seizure. Um, those with abnormalities are at higher risk. Uh, 60 to 70 percent will go on to have more seizures. So an EEG can help determine one's uh, potential to go on to have more seizures and the need for medication, uh, but it's not as perfect as we would like. In general, um, 
th there are many factors that weigh into how um, helpful an EEG will be. If the sleep recording was longer, close to an hour in duration, that helps increase the yield. If sleep was recorded as a part of the EEG, that also improves the yield. If the EEG was done um, in a short time frame after the seizure, that increases the, uh, the yield. Uh, studies have shown if an EEG were to be done uh, within 24 hours after a seizure, the chance that epileptiform abnormalities will be seen as higher than if the EEG was performed greater than 24 hours later. So an EEG can be helpful uh, for the reasons uh, that I mentioned, but it's not a perfect tool and it does not predict everybody who's going to go on to have a seizure.